Hello and welcome back. If you're new, I'm Deirdre and today I'm talking about emotional roadblocks to downsizing, decluttering, leading an uncluttered life. This is a huge one and it comes up again and again and again. It's the biggest block, the biggest roadblock to getting through that process of downsizing. And it's the one that we're most likely to, you know, these are the things we push to one side and we'll say, yeah, I'll deal with those later. A little bit of dealing with it later is fine, but it can't go on forever. So, you know, in the reality of life, the, the things we own, it's the old, you know, books are like puppies, we can't keep them all. At some point, a lot of people I know have had to deal with this. They've had to deal with dealing with perhaps their parents have passed away and they've had to deal with their homes or um, even other families like uncles and aunts and they've, they've had to help with that. Um, and in, even in your own home when you're facing downsizing you have to sometimes just deal with it because you physically can't fit the stuff in. And we come back time and time again to this attachment that we have for things. And as humans we've been forming attachments to our homes and the things that we bring into them since I think cavemen, cavemen, um, our ancient ancestors, I won't use the cavemen thing, but people who lived in caves put soot on their hands and put palm prints and drew beautiful beasts and things on the walls and charcoal. So it's a perfectly normal healthy thing to have attachments to our homes and to the things that we have in them. The, the current issue I find with talk of minimalism and decluttering and downsizing is that many of the people who are talking about it um, are people who have not raised their children in a home or you know had a long time in one place or a lifetime of collected memories and items and things that they've done uh, and worked on. And I think time builds up more of these than it does when you're 25 or 35. Let's get into this. How do, if we have to do it, if we want to do it, we have to do it, then how are we going to get through this? So number one is sort of the easiest in some ways because I'd say that while there are many things that we own, and this has certainly been true of me in the past, less so now, that we own that don't have a place, as it were, in our current home, that we don't display, we don't use, we don't um, actually even see year in, year out in many cases, but we keep them nonetheless. And some of that can be because our taste has changed. So step one is to accept that we do not have to honour the taste of our previous selves. We don't have to say, hey, I loved this in the 80s, therefore I'm somehow being disloyal to my 80s self who bought this or wanted it and loved it and kept it. And I mean, look, if you've got the space, fine. But and if you use it and you love it and you look after it, fine. But if you're not doing any of those things, then really accept that your taste has changed and let those things go. Now, what I actually hear a lot are people say, yeah, but I don't know what my taste is. And I don't know whether I can use this in my house and make it look good, or how could I do that? So one of the things I'd say is to, you know, make your own vision board. Go on Pinterest and develop that taste. What makes your heart jump? Look on Instagram, put in hashtag home decor, put in hashtag Scandinavian decor, put in... I don't know, anything that you come, you know, comes to mind. Hashtag flowery wallpaper, floral wallpaper, whatever it is that you like, put a little hashtag and do a search and you will get this wonderful thousands of images that you can then uh, copy into a, a little album. You just hit that little bookmarky thing on the corner and copy it into an album and you can go back to it and you can say, this was 2020 home vision board. Now those sorts of things give you an idea of what you can do with the things that you own. However, if you don't love things, do let them go. On the same theme, you also don't have to honour the taste of your grandparents and your parents. It's okay that they loved things that you don't. Now I'm not talking about something that was very special, we'll talk about those a bit later. You know, if it doesn't have a place in your home, if you're not using it, let it go. Let it find a home somewhere where it will be loved. Now the other action is that you don't have to live with, it's a bit the same thing, you don't have to live with the bad decisions you made somewhere along in the past. You don't have to feel guilty because you bought X thing when you were at Kmart. This would be a me thing. When you were at Kmart and it just looks so cute 
and it was only ten dollars it was only twenty dollars or something like that and you think oh i'll have one of those you're feeling a bit down it's going to make you feel better hey it might have done its job it made you feel better i'm not condoning aimless consumption i'm simply saying that sometimes we make bad decisions and we don't have to live with them forever we can say mm, that was not such a good thing to buy I think that will be donated, sent off to live in another world, or maybe it's broken. Please don't try to fix it. It probably isn't worth it. Your effort, your energy, deconstruct it as much as you can, put it in the recycling. Maybe some of it goes in the trash. And remember not to make spontaneous decisions in the future when you're feeling a bit low. Because those bad decisions that we make, yeah, we have to get rid of them somewhere along the line. Action number three. Bit of psychology here. Yes, qualified. Let's look at motivation. Can you, when you come to deciding about whether you can let something go, what are you going to do with it? And you're finding it really hard. Look at the motivation for what it is that is tying you to this thing. It's, that's the tie. It's what is motivating your emotions. Like, is it that you feel that if you let go of your mum's good china, I mean, that's a very obvious sort of thing, that you would feel disloyal to her for not liking it enough to want to keep it. Um, that disloyalty thing comes in if somebody's given you a gift and you really don't like it. We have to try and remember that the giving of the gift is the thing that is important, not necessarily that you keep it forever. Regifting, um, handing things on, letting things go, maybe adapting them so that they do work in your environment if that's what you want. Those sorts of things, this feeling of disloyalty can be really powerful. And we have to separate the emotional tie to the person that we love or the time that we loved and we enjoyed from this particular thing. Now we can do that by basically by owning it I think in many ways by acknowledging that it doesn't change how you feel about your mother if you let go her China let her China go God, I can't even speak English today um, and it doesn't mean you don't love your child if you don't hang on to every sports uniform that they had right through school nobody does that do they anyway but you know what I mean that it isn't actually about your love for that person it doesn't mean that because you um, you don't want to keep every souvenir you've ever picked up on a holiday that you didn't absolutely love and value that time and they aren't beautiful memories it just means that you've detached your emotional attachment to an item or to a memory and you've detached it from your own love for that person for that memory now this isn't easy and i know that but it does make a huge difference if you can actually identify that that's what's happening. Um, that it isn't disloyalty. That you love people without holding on to the things that they loved uh, or that were part of your life when you lived with them. It's identifying the, the strings that bind. And once you see them, and once you see them for what they are, and that that's not actually true, that you are being disloyal if you let it go, because you're not. You still love that person, you still have wonderful memories, and you can take a photo, you can put it in a photo journal, annotate it, always say what it was about, write a little description, make it a baby journal. Do that if it helps you to separate. And those are the things that are the hardest in some ways to step forward and, and to get through. So action four is really associated with three as well. And it comes back to the psychology of it again, but it's acknowledging that it's hard. Letting yourself say, hey, this is really hard. I am finding this difficult. And being kind to yourself about it, because a lot of people go, well, everybody else is doing it. You know, like these people got rid of huge amounts from their homes. Well, they weren't, maybe they were, you know, able to do it. Maybe they'd reached a point in their lives when the, the need to get rid of it was far more important than the, the ties to hold on to it. We don't know what individuals' uh, attachments to things are. We can't read into their minds. We don't know. So don't feel intimidated by what other people have managed to do. This is not about them. It's only about you. I'm not being hard on Marie Kondo, but... Um, her approach, was, which was so helpful to so many people, yes, including teaching people how to fold, something I never needed to learn, but um, her attachment 
uh, come back and ask her in 40 years how her attachment is to the things of her little child, whether she's just been able to just can't you know, she hadn't had a baby when she wrote that book. I'd be really, really interested to see her in even 10 or 15 years time if she doesn't have emotional attachment to things, far more things than she ever believed she would. Um, I'll be interested because many of the people who uh, are very um, good at minimalism, and I don't think it's something um, that we should all seek to attain. This is, minimalism is not nirvana, okay? Minimalism is just a choice that some people make. Other people choose busy and full and, you know, really surrounded by things. These are just choices. These are not moral things. This is just, what do you like? What do you love? If you like simple and more minimal, that's lovely. If you like busy and not cluttered, but you know what I mean about, items, lots of things around you, that's wonderful as well. No judgment there at all. Um, but I think many of the people who are very keen to, uh, to talk about minimalism, frankly, have not experienced a great deal of life. And if you're 30 and you're talking about minimalism, chances are you haven't got kids, you haven't had them, you may not have had kids, you may not have become emotionally attached to things, there may not have been a struggle, you probably haven't been, hopefully, through a divorce or a death, or maybe your parents are still alive. All of those things that end up where we end up with stuff that comes and attached with emotional things. So accept that it's hard. And this is where it gets harder. Because at that point where you go, oh my God, I can't do this, it's too hard. That's actually the tipping point. That's the point where you need courage to push through. And yes, I'm not being overly dramatic. I think it needs real courage to own that you are not thing, your things, that your love and your, your attachment to people is not related to the things that they used to own. It is related to you and your relationship with them. And it takes courage to push through that and know that you will be okay if you do get rid of these things. That your relationship with that person, with that memory, will not be diminished if you let the items go. Now, I'm not saying let everything go. I'm saying let go enough that's right for you. But accept that this is the learning point. Where you feel that you really can't let it go, but you need to, uh, and you know that you need to, that's the point where you learn the most about yourself and that you can grow the most in yourself by saying, hey, actually, I'm bigger than this. I'm me, I'm whole. My relationships and my emotions are whole without these things. And look, keep the ones you want and you have space for and you can incorporate into your, your love and your life. But you are whole without them. And then action five is to take it baby steps by baby steps. Uh, that you can nibble at this. Don't try and do it all at once because if you, unless you've been pushed by, you know, perhaps there's been a death or divorce or disability or something that has pushed and you're having to do this in a hurry and, and that makes it very hard. I, I totally acknowledge that. But if you have some time, then do it bit by bit because you will find that the things that you are letting go today are things that you could not have imagined letting go even a month ago when you first went through. That each time you go through things, that each level you have less of an attachment to them. You may decide to, you know, the, the thing you couldn't let go a month ago, now you're going to say, hey, I'm going to take a picture of that, going to pop it in the journal, going to write a happy memory beside it, and that will do for, for that item. And like any muscle, the more you use it, the stronger it gets. And that includes this downsizing, decluttering, uncluttering, whatever muscle, the muscle of choice, making these decisions, these hard decisions again and again and again, and you get stronger and stronger and stronger and then you feel even more able to let things go. So it's a, you know, the muscle grows the more you use it. And the last thing I'd like to say, and it's not a step, but it's just a bit of a reminder, is that if you love it, use it, because you never know. My hometown is Christchurch, New Zealand, and in 2011 it experienced an extremely violent earthquake, and there was a huge amount of shaking, uh, and liquefaction and many, many homes or many people were, were killed and, and many of the old buildings were damaged and destroyed. But more than that, just on an individual level, 
the people lost so many of the things that they valued you know grandma's china was in the china cabinet china cabinet fell things came off shelves kitchen the whole kitchens opened up and everything shook out of them all those precious things that you know the ornaments anything that was breakable could you know many many things were broken um and also with the liquefaction this ooey sticky stuff that came up through the ground um that caused a lot of damage to things like clothes you know because there was mold attached to you know ongoing you couldn't live in your house you went back by then everything had gone moldy and was destroyed so use it up now if you love it you will use it look at it enjoy it maintain it keep it clean don't put it in a box and forget about it and go oh yeah but you know i've still got it so it matters nah, get it out use it love it use those beautiful crystal glasses for your drink of water in the morning because that feels good anything that you love that you enjoy using use it daily guess what you might break it might get damaged might get worn out um, you know, if it's something like beautiful stationery, a friend of mine had lots of beautiful stationery for crafting things. They all got damaged by this damp. Now, use things up. Don't wait. If you uh, don't wait for some day when you will write a beautiful letter, write your shopping list on it. Because at least then you're enjoying it while you're doing the supermarket shopping. You know what I mean? I mean so if the China gets chipped if you put the thing with the gold ring on it in the dishwasher and the gold ring comes off, but you're using it on a day-to-day -day basis. I'd say use it because Christchurch didn't expect an earthquake. They, it just happened. And all of those things were gone. And so many of them were beautiful and were unused. And I think the best way to show how much you love things is to use them and maintain them and look after them and keep them clean and polish them doesn't mean you won't be sad if one day you drop them but at least you know you've got the pleasure out of it so that's my little take on this last little bit i'd love to hear what you think about it it's so charged and i'd just like to hear how you feel about that if that's something that's on your list if that helps in any way so i hope that if you enjoy this give me a like and a subscribe and wave out and say hello and I hope that whatever you're doing today, you're having a lovely time and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.